Hey guys, Kim and Danielle here. We are talking about human design and homogenization, and we're just having a little chatty conversation. I'm an integrative life coach, and um, Danielle, you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Danielle. Uh, yeah, I have a website called soulmapping.life, but basically Kim and I have been working together um, with both of our different approaches to assist people to, you know, potentiate their, their lives, you know, using the skills and tools that Kim has for helping people navigate the material plane. And then the things that I do to help people understand how to differentiate using the codes and languages of human design, gene keys and astrology. So yeah, we just wanted to hop on here today and talk a little bit more about homogenization. If you are familiar at all with human design and you know your strategy and authority, what type you are, uh, that would be helpful. If not, uh, just put a comment below and we can help you figure that out. Um, but yeah, homogenization, right? What does it mean? It's basically when we are dwindling ourselves down, right, to be what we think will work for us or what other people might want us to be, what the world wants us to be, um, it all comes from conditioning, right? So the world is homogenized, like so much about this world, uh, especially when you think of the collective or, you know, any big group activities or things like that, it's kind of like, Everyone is meant to operate kind of similarly um, and all of that. So this is the opposite of where we are going as individuals, right? And here to be differentiated and in our own authorities. So I thought that would be a good topic today. <laughs> yeah, okay. and with good reason though, right? Because like I had five kids and I kind of had to homogenize them in order to run the ship. So I can relate to it so that there can be some control or some consistency or like, hey, there's a business here, this business of the world. And so yeah. we need things to run efficiently. And so we need to categorize, we need to label, we need to understand so that we can manage this large group of people. Like if there's a concert and there's 5,000 people who can come into the Coliseum, there's gotta be a system. You gotta buy online, you need to buy, pay here, you need to come through this door, you need to sit here. You need, so with understanding, but the problem is we lose our bio-individuality. I just want right. to kind of tap, add that little, there's a, there's a great reason for it, but we just kind of got hooked into it. Yeah, for sure. And that brings up another point to how, like, yes, a lot of times we think of conditioning. We're like, oh, it's coming from outside of us. Um, and sometimes we don't think about how we're conditioning others or um, making it so that they're not in their full sovereignty. Right. So, and I've, I've noticed that in myself, uh, through many other people too, but that is also another aspect of it. And we could go into all these different themes like parenting, right. Which I'll give you one little caveat here that with parenting, even with what Ross says about it is that we want to empower the child into being themselves. Like we, we lay the, the framework and the boundaries, but really kind of setting them free and, and letting them be themselves. Um, but yeah, when we think of homogenization, we can also think of how we are homogenizing and conditioning others rather than empowering their individuated experience as well. And without knowing. So I did what I could, like that's, that's all the tools that I had. That's the only resources and understanding that I had. So I'm watching it. I'm watching my children with their children. So now I have 12 grandbabies and I'm hearing the things that I used to believe that I used to think that I passed on that they are now living on. And I'm like, whoops, <laughs> but you, <laughs> you do what you can do with what you have. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're saying like there's, there's a good or a bad, it's more like an awareness and an understanding so that people can be empowered. And I'm, I'm with you and Ra on the, if we understood the, that the child will be fine being who they are. It's when we try to make them someone else, those are the ones who suffer. That's us, right? That did what we thought we needed to do to belong, to be safe, to be good, or whatever it was that sense of belonging was. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's, I don't feel like it's anything more than an awareness at this point, because I could go into regret, I can go into sadness, and then I can go into fear and try to change it for my children and grandchildren, right? I could do either or, or I can just be present and be in awareness. 
Right. Exactly. And that's kind of also what you and I were talking about before, even with like our businesses, right? So people come to me for sessions and I read their charts and all this and that. And when I first started this many years ago, it was very much like, oh, they have to understand everything. And I still put like my, my love and intention and I, I do want them to understand, but it's not like, it's not up to me to like make the horse drink the water. Right. So it's kind of like, really taking that on as well, like with what we are seeing, right? So when we think of differentiation, we think of um, each one of us being in our own authority. It's not just like our makeup. It's not just our codes. It's not just, hey, you have this gate and that gate and this defined and this is your cross. It's also about the alignment of that when you are correct is that you will be in the correct place in the correct environment. And then you'll be able to see something very different. And that's what you'll be able to share. So yeah, it's not just your codes, right? So when we're in this new place and we're seeing something new, it's not about forcing other people to understand it even. It's like we use our strategy and authority to communicate it, right? Hopefully from response or waiting for invitation, uh, if you're a projector and the other ones as well. But um, that's, that's the whole point of this is to have awareness and to be in the right place at the right time. This is how you're different is what you're seeing, what you're experiencing. Um, sorry, Kim, I know you want to say something. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just like, still, I don't want to get too far away from what you said earlier about the pressure for them to get it. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that's a really heavy burden for so many coaches and entrepreneurs and mentors and healers that, that because there's a pay exchange that there's like, they need to get it. And then there's this, um, this urgency inside this commitment, right? That it's like, they need to get it. And so there's layers of pressure on, and proof of why they need to get it because then they'll be mad at me. Then they won't understand. Then they won't get what they want. And so I just wanted to add that you sound like, um, like you're really clear on it. I've recently got to a new level of clarity on it that I was not before. I was very pressured by anybody who I served, like in, in my business with my children, you know, with my, my husband, like all of this time, I'm just very recently coming to this. I'm just kind of curious about it for you. If maybe there's something that we're now experiencing, that's kind of giving us some relief from that. Is there, is there awareness that's, I mean, I, I think it's different for everyone. I've been in my experiment for over eight years now. So, you know, it took me a couple of years to really get into my alignment and to like master everything in my own chart, like really understanding how my chart operates, mm -hmm. because I believe that as you start to understand your codes, that you start to get taught by life, a lot of things, because it's through the lens of your own codes. Um, so perhaps maybe, you know, you have come to this like culmination of understanding with certain things in your chart and being a six, two off the roof, um, you know, with all of that, I love to look at some things in your astrology to see like, okay, you have this transit and that going on. Yeah. So, um, and I'm 50, like I'm going on 53. So I'm, there, there was probably some residue still left there that maybe it's, it's finally like cleared the way to be able to see it and understand it. Cause there was for sure a hook of codependency of people pleasing of, of commitment or like this, this, um, it's a pressure is the best way I can describe it. I felt very pressured and responsible. And I think this is where like that's coming from the church and from the parents and from the schools. I think there is a sense of pressure from the leaders or the role models or does that make sense? Like as, as the parent that desperately wants the child to fit into the world, like right. to go to the parties, to be invited to the team, to, to there, there's a, a fear of not belonging. And so it's coming from a good place. I think it's just a distortion. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, us being six twos, right? Kind of what I was telling you about before. If anyone has a six in your profile, Weird um, <laughs> being objective, right? This is what it means. And this is what being a role model is, is that when I hear to force people to be what we think or what we're seeing as our opinion or life coaches or health coaches or anything, because even Ross says like, if someone is a smoker 
and someone tells them to quit smoking, and this is an extreme example, but if someone tells them to quit smoking, it's not correct for them, then quitting smoking would kill them, right? So it's okay. understanding how homogenization, not being in your true self is what actually like kills you, right? So then we don't want to put that energy on others, right? Where it's like, oh, you have to do it this way for like homogenizing them. We think we see what's best for them, but that's, that's not really correct. This is old paradigm, like old world way of hierarchy and dominance and all of that. So objectivity, right? We can share with people what we see and then let it go, right? And only share if it's like either coming from response or you're waiting for the invitation or it's invited. But if we get into those situations where we're sharing what we see, and we're meeting a lot of resistance, um, that is an indication that maybe you shouldn't be sharing it. <laughs> like it's like to that person, right? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't timed right, the geometry isn't right. And Some of them, maybe yep. for you to, to work through it. I call it like throw a diamond to the swine, kind of like you're trying to force this information that came clear for you to someone. And the, the analogy I used last week was like, we're running, like we're on a track and there are six lanes and we're on this lane and someone else is on this lane and our view is different and the pavement is different. And when we're trying to have a conversation and, and there's no synchronicity, there's no understanding because we're right. speaking two different languages, not bad or wrong, not one higher than the other. It's just two different, two different perceptions in that moment. It could change, but in that moment. And so I definitely felt that. So I can relate to everything you're saying right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Kim, like I said before, like I had experienced a lot of this stuff, like when I first started doing sessions where I just wanted to share with everyone because it's like, oh my God, we figured out so much about life and this could change your life. And oh my God. And now even people that I know very closely to me, like even my boyfriend, um, even like my parents, right. They don't really know about this stuff. You would think that people closest to me, I am like an uber geek nerd on like astrology and human design and all these codes. And this is like what I do. And like people closest to me don't really know that much about it because they either, either they haven't asked because I don't share, I'm a generator. I'm not going to tell you this stuff unless you ask. Even my closest people, you know what I mean? So like that's from my own learning, yeah. you know? Where I'm like, ooh, I don't want to try to share because I'm going to have to waste energy trying to prove, trying to, whatever it is. I'm just I'm coming to that. I want you to know I'm just coming to that. So kudos to you. I've gotten glimpses of it in the past, but I mean, I went down a, a rabbit hole with it again. And there's a bias with people who know, like, and love us. There's, yeah. And so they're, they're looking or hearing us through the perception of the lens of the that how they identify us. Mm -hmm. And so if it's a sister or if it's a childhood friend or a parent, or like, that's what I've noticed. Have, have, Cause like, you, thank God we have each other to geek out, you know? And we have those, the handful of clients who are like, no, tell me more, tell me more, you know? And <laughs> that we can like play with this. Cause I can get caught up and I know you can too, like three, four, five hours of just like, whoa, like, oh, everywhere is holy cow highlighting and, and I remember seeing it there and go and pull this up and pull this up and you know if someone's in that energy they are just like oh my god this is so fascinating but when they're with their family having a barbecue in a different world and then they walk into this they're just like I'm out yeah it's so weird yep. it's, it's something that it, it's kind of just like brings yep. you in and then there's this and then it's how to leave that that depth and then come back into the material plane. But as I'm saying it, I'm thinking that's my cross. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. interesting. Yeah. How yeah. do I maneuver this in the material world? Yep. Well, you start to see how everything, even the mundane, and this is what I was saying with your codes, like learning about how your codes operate and learning the language of existence and the codes of it is that in the material world, even though I'm not let's say sharing with my parents about, you know, the mechanisms of incarnation and how the neutrinos get into our crystals, you know, like I'm not explaining <laughs> that to them. Um, I am witnessing so much and like through my own codes and especially through my parents, because I do have their charts, you know, and just about my childhood and all this stuff that it, it really, 
um, you start to see even more clearly how your mechanisms operate, how life operates. Um, so even though you're not explaining all that stuff to them, it's like a witnessing process. And this is what being a clear sovereign being is who has clear outer authority, right? Because that's what we're here to do is share and express and commune in this really deep way. Um, and this is about being objective and sovereign and, you know, really just being a witness, right? We're not here to force and take everything so seriously and because we meet resistance. I think we know? can talk about this in the diet industry, in the health and wellness industry, in relationship, in business. And there's, yeah. I mean, because it's everywhere. It's right. The coach who has figured out how to make a million dollars suddenly has the secret for everyone else. And I was on a call a few weeks ago and the comment was everyone knows within three minutes and you just got to decide and do that's being a CEO of your business. And I mean, just like, and I left the call. Because yeah. I was like 50% of these people are emotional authority. That's a lot. That is not correct for them. And they are going to try to go and do that. They're going to enter correctly. And then like, so I was annoyed by that. And I was like, let me just get out of here and not come back. Yeah. 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 If it's not differentiated, if it's not information that's tailored to the individual, you're being homogenized. And that's like the bottom line. I mean, there are certain ways, yes, to like things on the material plane to operate, but everyone's strategy for how to get there is really different. And that's really not the purpose. Of it didn't feel good. It didn't feel good because that's a pressure for me to decide within three minutes or to like, I want, I'm looking, especially like think about a five one who needs all the information and they don't have clarity yet. So they're still like investigating and looking and now they're telling, cause this is like a mastermind, like a coach of coaches. So now putting that pressure. So now there's 50 people who are going to go pressure someone else with that same truth or so said truth that worked for him who happened to be sacral authority because I have yeah. his chart. Yep. This is exactly how homogenization works. And this is what creates distortion. So when we are homogenized, I mean, we're not being our true selves, right? We're not, which means we're not seeing what we're here to see. Then what is created is resistance and distortion and not, you know, like you said, it's like all in, in the communities, the spiritual communities, the religious communities, the new age and coaches and health. And it's like, they're throwing a blanket and saying this works for everyone. And it doesn't, it's not unique. You know, a conversation that has been super painful. Um, and I didn't, I've heard this before. I'm like supposed to be working with relationships or in relationships or stuff. And I'm not a relationship coach. But this conversation has come up several times about sexuality and relationships and you're it's like you're supposed to you know because I, I was always asking that question is it a need or is it a want is it a desire or is it like it what is it what is the body like what's coming you know what's coming from here what's coming from from the actual body and desire and there I've, I've done enough intensive coaching with enough people co coaches that I've hired as well as working with coaches to realize that it's I've probably heard about 50, 50 about it being correct or not correct. According to if you're, if someone is pleasing you sexually, like that responsibility coming from someone else or, you know, like, and I thought that was really interesting how it applies so much pressure and judgment in the relationship, expecting another individual to be what society says, you should be horny. You should be whatever at this age, or you should desire more. Or you sh and it's, that's really intimate, personal and painful. Yeah. For someone and, being told that. And the sexual codes, even like the sexual gates, the way that we can look through human design, um, it shows us that it's genetic, right? That even how we have sex, what we find attractive, what we're connected to, which connection is actually conditioning. Conditioning is not bad, but the sparks and the chemistry that we feel are from connections. Um, the sexual energy is actually all like you can be compatible sexually or not right? It's like in the codes and you might try to like, okay, well maybe I'll try to do this or that. And, you know, for those of us that have had sex with more than one person in our life, you'll see that some people there's like a connection yep. and some people it's like, <laughs> Oh, what is this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And others that you, I mean, I've met people who were just, you know, met someone, whether it was a one night stand or just a short relationship and or like cannot get rid of like they are so sucked in by it they like it's 
they can't break away from. And I was at Serenby and met someone out. She was from another country and just happened to be in the waiting room whenever I got there. And so we had conversation and she was taught, sharing a story, someone she had met and it, they were sexual. And she was like, she could, she said it had been around 18 months. She was tortured by this desire that she, like, I, she's like, I have to have it. It, it did something. It, pulled something from it. I was like, this is so fascinating. It'd be so interesting to look at the dynamics that played out. Yeah. The first thing that came to my mind is like, okay, does she have the 30th date and does she have an open sacral? <laughs> you know, Cause there are lots of things that you can see, you know, you can see like sex addicts potentially, or like different kinky things or, you know, masturbate, like you can see it like in a chart, like a, a probability of that. Um, he said she it, had never been swooned that way before. Like, she was like, I wish I would have never met him. I wish it would have never happened. I am like, she's like, she I'm like, what it's <laughs> purgatory. Yeah. Um, it, it, she's like, it just sucked me in. And it's like, it's controlling me now. Yeah. Well, and I think the sexual stuff too is really interesting because, you know, how often are we actually able to be fully open, right? In a sexual encounter. Um, I personally have experienced it and I wasn't always like that. I'm a six, two, our sexual strategy is shyness or boldness, right? Like that's one of the things yeah. is like shyness. Um, but I've actually experienced the other end of the spectrum as well. Um, and I think that that all this stuff comes together as you become more and more authentic, even in sexual experiences, even in all these things, you can just be more comfortable with yourself and, and fully yourself in everything can heal a lot of sexual trauma, I'm sure too, you know? And I was having a, a conversation with a friend this morning and it was about sleep and um, her partner not like ruffling and, and moving around and not, you're not being able to get sleep. And the mention of sleeping in another room to be personally responsible and get your sleep because it's so important, right? You can, you get delirious if you don't sleep for long enough. Like, um, and it was weird how that brought up that conversation that, and that's the homogenization that you're supposed to sleep with your partner. You're supposed to eat with your partner. You're supposed to like what they like you. I was like, do you wear their clothes? Do you hunt when they hunt? Do you like, what about individuality? But there is so much pressure because the story is like, you need to keep the queen size bed or the full size bed so that you stay closer. Because if you sleep in separate rooms, then there will be no more intimacy. And then you quit, if you quit praying together and eating together, and, and then it just creates this, that's why people get divorced. And I've heard these things. Oh and yeah. Live that. And I was like, that is not true. You get to so create much that, the rules for your own relationship. So what if you live in another house? Maybe you don't want to get married, but there's so much religious dogma around that, right? And then society and the judgment and there, anyway. Oh yeah, no, I would, I would love to do a call one day on this type of stuff because we can see it just through the lens of like the genetic codes and see it's not personal and um, it is really tied to religion though too. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the time. So we're right at our uh, 30, going on 30 minutes. So. Awesome. Uh, is there anything else? I know I talked a lot this time that I That's great. wanted to add. No, I just think, you know, we are going to maybe start doing some more calls like this where it's just like kind of off the cuff, but have some sort of theme. So, um, yeah, we just want to be share. really interesting to have someone else come on and, or even pull up our charts and be able to kind of explain how some of this, you know, plays in, or even the dynamics of like the things that might be like draw us together to just show in just relationship in general. Cause I think relationship is the richness of life itself. Yeah. I mean, we could definitely pull up our charts and look at that too. Um, but yeah, we will, I guess, see you guys next time. <laughs> yeah, I'll put Danielle's information below if you want a reading with her. So, and I think we, we have your website listed there too, if you, they want to kind of go research and we'll be back next week. All righty. All right. Stop live stream. I don't know <laughs> why I say that while we're still.